Let someone say dry bones will live again. Say it again. Shout it one more time. I want to teach on how to live a miraculous life. But for time, I will jump because we want to experience that miracle today. If you don't have any expectation, please, I give you the next few minutes. Jot some expectations down. If there are things in your life that you've been told that it can't be done, I want you to note it down. If there are things that you have given up hope on, doctors have said this cannot happen. If they've told you it is too late, I want you to note those, those situations. Because I believe today the dry bones will live again. One revelation you must have when you want to live a life of miracles is the revelation of the dwelling, the dwelling power of God. In Psalm 91 verse 1, Psalm 91 verse 1 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The first thing you need to understand is that the secret place of the Most High is not a physical place. The secret place of the Most High is a revelation. There are many key revelations that draws you into a secret place. I'll talk on only one today. And that secret place is revelation of the name of Jesus. The revelation of the name of Jesus is one of the secrets of the Most High. It was a secret in God that was hidden from generations until Jesus was unveiled. That was why the nobles, the priests, did not know because it was concealed to them. They didn't understand until after resurrection was the secret of the Most High revealed to them. Philippians 2 verse 10. Philippians 2 10 says that at the name of Jesus, Every knee shall bow. This information was given after resurrection. That of things in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. So in the name of Jesus was a power so strong that all the various realm honored and bowed to the name. He kept it as what? As a secret. When you want the kingdoms to bow, you need revelation of the name of Jesus. Many times we read this scripture that says and in John 14, verse 13 and 14. John 14, verse 13 and 14. It says, And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son, Many of us, we focus on whatever we ask. But that promise resides in the name. Am I speaking to someone here? The secret of that answer is in the name. Verse 14. Verse 14 says, If you ask anything, again, in my name, the secret is not what you ask. Not how big or how mighty it is. Is that the answer dwells in a secret. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Can someone shout a big hallelujah for that? Hallelujah. Now look at Matthew 18.20. Matthew 18.20 also speaks. It says, For where two or three are gathered, Many times we 
Look for a partner and hold hands where two or three are gathered. No, sir. The secret is not in the gathering. There are many gatherings that God is not there. There are multitude, crowd, praying, and God is not there. It's the key is the gathering in my name. The name is the secret of the Most High. He says, whenever my name is present, I am there in the midst of them. I'm where? I'm there in the midst of them. I'm where? I am there in the midst of them. Understanding that the sacred place of the Most High is the revelation of his name. They that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under a shadow. A shadow is a confirmation of a presence. A shadow is a confirmation of its presence. So he's saying in another word that anyone that access the revelation in the name of Jesus, anyone that, that stays the word dwelling means to stay somewhere. Dwelling means to reside somewhere. Anyone that focuses on Jesus and the power in his name and you stay long enough, you are translated right by the side of the Father where his shadow is. When he says, if two or three shall gather in my name, I'll be there in the midst of them. It simply means that revelation of the name of Jesus commands his presence. The Father will show up when attention is focused on his son. They that dwell. So anytime you are believing God for a miracle, Focus not on the things you are waiting for. Focus on Jesus. Anytime you want to experience the supernatural, take your eyes away from the challenges, the impossibilities. Let Jesus be your focus. The more you look at him, the more you are changed. You are translated. You are transfigured. The more you look at him, the more the miraculous becomes present in your life. All you need is to take your eyes away from your pain and see Jesus. Some years back I was traveling and we had an accident on the way. We traveled out of Lagos and had an accident. There were three people in the car and because I, I was wearing a seat belt. The other two went, went wearing a seat belt. So, on crash the face. That time there was no seat belt. There was no love for seat belt. I wasn't wearing a seat belt until I heard God say, wear seat belt. Pull your seat belt. You pulled it. Car. A few minutes on the way, all we heard, I was sleeping. I just said, ah! Then I opened my eyes, we had head on collusion. On Lagos Ibadan. The driver hit his chest on the, on the steering, next person by my side crashed his head on the glass, his eye was bleeding, he, can't, he couldn't see anymore. So I was the only one that, that, well, that survived it. So I, when I came out, the car was right in the middle of the expressway, and it was a bend. So which meant if a car comes, it will be too, too late. Like it happened to us, a car broke down on the express, I did not move, and we made a turn. It was too late for the driver. Or is I going to press brake? He scream. Ah! And press acceleration. <laughs> and, 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 and give it more fire. So I came out, pushed the car to the side, dragged the two of them, both of them in blood on the roadside, and was trying to flag down a car for emergency. Because one could not see, one was lying down. After I flagged for almost 15 minutes, 
all the cars that, that come, they have to slow down because there was an accident. They slow down, they look, and they zoom off. They come, they slow down, they look, and they zoom off. The man by my side was screaming, help me, help me, help me, he was screaming, he was screaming. Maybe it was the accident, he was screaming, I don't want to die, don't let him die, I don't want to die. He was screaming, he was, he was losing his mind. When I saw that, that scream, the blood didn't help us. I knelt down and I held his hand and closed my eyes. All along I was looking out for men to help. And I was looking at the man in, about to die. But I took my eyes away. Closed my eyes, held his hand, and sang a song. And he joined me in that song. And we began to worship God. Right on the road. Both of us on the floor. He was blind. He became blind. He could not see again. Eyes was open. He saw nothing. As we worship God, I can't, I can't tell how many, how many minutes we were. I, just, I, I lost consciousness. Lost, thought that we were right on Lagos Ibadan Express Road. Lost the fact that they were, were stuck and there was nothing we could do. Lost, just forgot that the man's voice was going down and down and down and down and down. We were worshiping God. The next night, my eyes were closed. I didn't see anything anymore. The next night, I heard, I heard a voice. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. When I opened my eyes, I saw the strangest person that God used to help us that day. All I did was take my eyes away from the storm and looked at Jesus. If anyone could just take your eyes away from problems and look at Jesus, what a miracle you'll experience. He's waiting for someone to look up. Can you just, just, just lift up your eyes up? Just look up. Just, just, just look up. Just, just attempt, just look up. No one that looks up sits down. If your eyes is looking up, you can never go down. No man steps down a valley when he's looking up. When you're looking up, you're mountain high. From today, whatever is the demand of your life, Jesus will take you high. Amen. I want you just for, just for a second, or two, five, five seconds, close your eyes. I just see Jesus intervening in that situation right now. Because he's here. There is nothing impossible that he cannot do. And there's nothing too hard. There's no storm too strong for him to steal. No matter how late it is, it's never too late for him to turn it around. No matter how confused the thing is, it can never be too confused for him to correct it. Never too late. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Now when you understand that that's Jesus also resides in you. He dwells inside of you. That's why in Romans, it's level says, but if the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, that dwelling place of the Most High dwells inside of you. That place of power, it dwells where? Inside of you. Put your hand on your belly and say, the power dwells inside of me. Say it one more time. Say, say the power dwells inside of me. I'm a carrier of power. 
anointing of God resides inside of me. In the name of Jesus. So the first thing is you, you understand your identity of the dwelling. That he dwells, that secret of God, that hidden treasure is inside of you. Wherever you go, you are a carrier of the dwelling power and the dwelling presence of God. So now I'll jump to the steps. When you know that, say the dry bones will live again. Say dry bones will live again. Ezekiel 37 verse 7. This story in Ezekiel 37 verse 7 was God showing us impossibility. When it gets to dry bones, it means that this one has gone from bad, bada, badest. Are you with me? When you have passed the baddest, then you are, you are approaching dry bones. Hallelujah. If doctors are still diagnosing and saying, maybe it's this, that's still bad. Dry bones is doctors have packed their books. They've, long, they've gone long ago. You, are you understand what I'm saying? Dry bones means that hospital was, you know, you're no, you no longer visiting hospital anymore. Dry bones is the situation where it's past that. So he's saying that that dead situation where no physician can intervene, dry bones can still live again. So he said dry bones will live again. So I'll give you just maybe four steps. The first one, he says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, I prophesied as I was what? Commanded. The first thing is the receiving of, prophet, of a prophetic word. Remember here, he saw himself in the valley of dry bones. And he had looked, can this bone live again? He, his faith could not carry it. So he anchored on the faith of God. He said, thou knowest. But when God spoke to him, speak to those dry bones, he received a prophetic word. Prophetic word is, 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 is direct revelation from God. It means it comes from God to you. It is not passing through anyone. From God through a vessel to you. So he received a prophetic word. When you want your dry bones to live, you need a prophetic word. And you must lash on it, no matter how impossible it looks. As I speak to someone today, that dry bone, that situation in your life, in your family, in your body, in your finances, it will live again. In the name of Jesus. So, it, Ezekiel received a prophetic word. So I prophesied as I was what? Commanded. The next thing we see in that same word was the next step of obedience to the word. How foolish it might look. How impossible it might look. When he was asked, can this bone live? I don't know. But yet, he, he, he prophesied. Hallelujah. Because the Lord told him to, he obeyed. Obedience to divine instruction. Obedience to divine direction. Cast your net to the deep. Yes, sir. Go to the widow's house. Widow. In, in the time of drought, the people that die first is widow. The people that die first is the widows and the orphans. That's why the Bible speaks of special care of widows and orphans. Because they are the most vulnerable. 
So how can a man, he wasn't sent to the palace or to the nobles or to the tax collectors. He was sent to a woman without husband that needed people to help her. But obedience is the key to the miraculous. So I prophesied as I was what? Commanded. When you receive a word, you must act. When a word hits you, you must respond. You must what? And behold, and there was a noise. There was what? This, remember that this scripture is an extract from the spirit realm. Are you with me? So, lies in this scripture transactions that happens in the invisible world. This scripture has taught us whenever you obey an instruction from God, there's a sound that must follow in the heavens. Whenever you act by faith, in obedience to God's word, heaven will respond with a sound. Anytime anyone obeyed, there's a sound. So he said, there was a noise. A noise. Joshua 6, verse 3 to 5. Joshua 6, 3 to 5. And he shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thou shalt do six days, do it six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets, ram horns, and the seventh day he shall compass the city seven times. And the priest shall blow with a trumpet. Men of war are trained to fight. They're not trained to march around a, a wall. Men of war, priests, are to pray for the warriors. They're not supposed to stand in front to chest for arrows. Priests don't wear shield. Priests are not skilled in, in war. It's men of war. It didn't make sense, but they obeyed. Because they received, they received a prophetic word. Remember, instruction direct from heaven. The supernatural comes with an instruction. They obeyed. And when they obeyed, they were told at the, at the, at the completion of your obedience. I'll say it again. At the completion of your obedience, there will be a sound. The sound cannot come in the middle of the journey. The sound cannot come before you begin to march. You must obey completely before the sound will proceed. I decree over someone complete obedience. I say complete Obedience. The sound will, proceed, will precede the obedience. The disciples were told, don't leave. Go to the upper room. Stay there until you are endowed with power. Yes, sir. They went. How long? We don't know. Where will we go next? We don't know. Just stay. They all did what? They obeyed. At the obedience of the instruction, the Bible says, there came a sound of a rushing mighty wind. Acts about 2 verse 2. Hallelujah. After obedience must be what? A sound. A sound. Say a sound. 
shout a sound. When the sound comes, it simply means heaven has moved. Say heaven has moved. Heaven has moved. Let someone just give God a big shout. A big shout. When the sound comes, something happens. Remember, that's in Ezekiel. It says, and, the, and behold, a sh is it, okay, let me first start. And as I prophesied, there was a noise after the sound, and behold, a shaking. Hallelujah. After the sound will come an earthquake. Say earthquake. Say it one more time. There was a movement. The bones began to make sound. The earth began to move. Remember that after the blast of the trumpet sound, Bible says, the wall of Jericho did what? Came down. That was the move of an earthquake. Every time the sound is released in heaven, the earth must move. Suddenly, the mighty wall that no one could pull down came crashing. I decree every unmovable in your life today will begin to move. Every wall of Jericho in your life will come down. Every dry bones will live again in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. When you make that sound, let's all make that sound one more time. A, a heaven provoking sound. Acts 16, verse 25. It says, Acts 16, verse and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. Remember that they got there because they obeyed God. They weren't preaching. So they arrested them. They were in obedience. And they prayed and sang praises unto God. That's why I said we still praise God today. Hallelujah. That their praise was so loud, was a noise. When you, when you want to sing now, let your neighbors hear your voice. They, their praise was heard by the prisoners. Why? It was a loud noise. Bible says the next thing that happened was what? An earthquake. Why? An earthquake will come after a, a sound. When the earth begins to move, is a sign, number one, angelic beings has visited earth. I decree there will be a giant visitation today in your life. I say it one more time. Angelic assistance. Help beyond man. Heavenly assistance. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Angels. When you see the earth quaking, angels are present. Matthew 28, verse 2. Matthew 28, verse 2. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven. When angels visit, the earth will shake. So when that's after the sound, the blast, angels descended upon the wall of Jericho and he came down. Every wall of Jericho in your life will come down today. Yeah. Angels of God will arise over your issue. 
Whatever is that request you have, I decree angelic intervention, angelic assistance in the name of Jesus. When the earth is quaking, Acts 4, 31. Acts 4, 31. And when they had prayed, and the place was shaking, where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, when the earth began to shake, is a sign that the Holy Ghost has arrived. The Holy Ghost has what? The Holy Ghost has what? When the Holy Ghost begins to blow, miracles take place. Deliverance takes place. Impossibility becomes possible. In Matthew 10, verse 7. Matthew 10, verse 7. And as you go, preach, say, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. When there's an earthquake, is a sign that the kingdom of God has come. The kingdom of power. The kingdom of, of deliverance. The kingdom of, of lifting. The kingdom of light has come. When the kingdom comes, it says, heal the sick. Healings take place. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. When the kingdom comes, you experience resurrection. Dry bones begin to live. That dead dream will live again. That dead business, that dead business will come back to life. That career that has been stagnant, that career that looked like, how will this end? I say to you, it is not over because your career will live again. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The miracle has started already. The, for someone right now as I speak, as I speak, the book has been opened to you. The closed file has not been opened. You will receive a call of remembrance. That document that has been left untouched, unsigned, unapproved. This week, you will receive a news. You will receive a news in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Dry bones shall live again. When the kingdom of God rises up, the kingdom of darkness goes down. When the kingdom of God appears, there is a transfer of wealth. Hallelujah. I decree one more time. That person I'm seeing in this realm of the spirit, you have been begging hand to mouth. You have been under so much pressure. You have done all you know to do, but it looks as if it's not working. I decree in the name of Jesus. I decree in the name of Jesus that dry bones come back to life. Not one thing. Dry bones shall live. Say that last word. Let's all say it one more time. Let's all say it one more time. Say it one more time. You have enjoyed favor before. You have tasted some blessings before. You taste again. 
I'm speaking to someone right now. Yes. Lord, I should tell you again. I'll say it one more time so you, you can understand. You have enjoyed help before. You have seen God move before. It looked like nothing happening again. I'm here to announce to you favor like you have never seen before. Dry bones will live again. It looked like nothing is working again. It will work afresh. What you were doing before you could not do, you begin to do again. You will do again. You will do again. You will do again. You will do again. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Dry bones will live again. You might be saying, the kind of thing I'm believing God, I've never seen it before. Yes, I've seen some good things, but not the one I'm waiting for. I've not tasted it before. It's spoke that prophesy on these dry bones. These bones that died Withered and left desolate. From these same bones shall arise a great army. You were not an army before. You were not great before. You're rising. You are coming bigger. More powerful. More influential. In the name of Jesus. What you have tasted before will be nothing compared with what God will do in your life. I'm speaking to someone. Better is the latter days than the beginning. The path of the just shall shine brighter, 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 brighter in the name of Jesus. Your best days have started. Say your best days are started. Say I receive it and shout for joy. Shout for joy. Shout for joy. Shout for joy. Dry bones shall rise again. Whatever has died in your life will live one more time. All eyes closed, please. Dry bones shall live again. Dry bones shall live again. No matter what you have been through, dry bones. Likora Satola Prato City. There will be a new beginning. There is a power of God that is able to heal, deliver, and save. He's able to wipe your pains and wipe your past away, give you a fresh new beginning. But the protocol is in the name of Jesus. The name that dwells on your inside. The name of Jesus must reside inside of you. So if you are here, as all eyes are closed, please. All eyes closed, please. You want to experience the miraculous, but you don't have Jesus living on the inside of you. You are yet to Catch a revelation of the dwelling. You are yet to experience him daily. You are yet to fellowship with him continuously. You need him today. And all you need to do, because we are about to enter into the realm of the supernatural, we are about to begin to receive prophetic words. 
The sound of heaven is about to invade the house. And the earth begin to quake. And chains begin to break. Doors begin to open. You have to be part of it. So all you need to do, put your hand on your chest. You're not, you don't have Jesus in your life. Or you've had him, but he's um, very far from you now. Your relationship with him is not um, intimate anymore. You need to go back to him because he's a, he's a source of the miracle. He's a sustainer. He's a keeper. No, you need to do say, Lord Jesus, I come back to you. I belong to you. I strayed and back. Forgive me, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me in your blood. Cleanse me. Come back into my life. Enter this heart of mine. Make my heart your dwelling place. I want to live for you. I want to serve you. I want to follow you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you for forgiving me in Jesus' name.